Leon here from backintelligence.com, and right now, Dr. David Oliver is gonna show you how to stretch your pec minor muscle. It's a very tight muscle over here, and he's gonna explain uh, why you need to stretch it, how you can find it, and you know, he's gonna give you two ways to release it. So, let's get to it. Hi everybody, Dr. Oliver coming at you from backintelligence.com, and today, we're gonna talk about the pec minor, what it is, how it affects people, and how we can deal with treating it. We see this muscle often is very tight in individuals, and it attributes to a lot of the poor posture positions we have in the rounding forward. If you haven't done so yet, I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, you'll constantly be getting updates on new videos and things that come through as we put them out. So again, we're gonna talk about the pec minor. When people talk about the pecs, there's multiple pecs, right? You have your pec major, which is the big pec across your chest here. If you were to see someone with their shirt off, you'll see the pecs. Those are the pec majors that you're generally gonna see. The pec minor is a much smaller muscle that's found underneath the pec. And essentially it's in this region here, and it comes down. It actually attaches through your third through fifth ribs here, and it goes up, and it attaches into what they call the coracoid process. So your shoulder blade or your scapula on your back has a little knob that sticks forward. And that, if you palpate around, you can actually find it. If you take your finger and put it just in front of your shoulder joint and just start moving your shoulder forward and back, you'll feel that little knob poke at you. If you go just below that and start rubbing around, you might find a really tender spot. That's usually that uh, pec minor tendon that you're feeling right there. So the, again, that pec minor attaches from those ribs and it goes up, it runs more of a vertical fashion, but slightly angled, it goes up and it hits that coracoid process and that's it. Not a big, big muscle, but a really important one. So it, like I said, it attaches to that coracoid process. So you got your scapula on the back, you got that little piece sticking forward there. If it's very tight, it's pulling, that shoulder is forward, okay? So it's actually causing your shoulder to be rounded or pulled forward, which is not a good thing. Overall causing a lot of stress, either in your shoulder joint itself, it can lead to impingement type syndromes, it can lead to rotator cuff damage over time. It can also cause a lot of just abnormal pain and tension in your neck and your upper back. So a really important muscle, essentially it connects the front of us to the back of us because it's on the front, touch those ribs and it's connected to that scapula which is on our back. So really important that we know where it is and know what it does and know if it can cause pain. So your pec minor assists in breathing because of its attachment point to the ribs, but it's also assists in a lot of the movements of the shoulder blade like we talked about. So we're gonna to look to see if we can find it. So again, palpate around, see if you can find that coracoid process. And if you find it, just start to run your hand down a little bit and back and forth. So again, these fibers are running like this. So you're gonna come in here, and if you find some real tender nodules and a little ropey sensation, you're probably on it. So again, pec minor, really important. We wanna find it and be able to address it. So signs that your pec minor is tight the easiest one to see on people is that rounded posture. You'll see people that actually, if you sit and look at them as they're walking or, or sitting, you'll see their shoulders are actually rounded forward. So again, we talked about that muscles attached to the shoulder blade, and if it's really short and tight, it's actually pulling us forward here. So if we see people like this, we tend to see they're tighter in their pec minors at, at a minimum. Another sign that you have a tight pec minor is you have a limited external rotation. So it's best to actually do this on the floor, or lay on your bed, and just lay down and see where you are with this. Can you get full rotation backwards, full external rotation? Or when you lay down, is your arm like this? If you can't push into it and you feel a lot of compensation through your shoulder, it might be because your pec minor is really tight. So we want to look at these things. Another thing I tend to see with people with tight pec minors is the ribs go out a lot. So as a chiropractor, I adjust people, I adjust their spine, I adjust their ribs. And we tend to see people that have a lot of dysfunction, a lot of ribs that constantly go out, especially in this upper area. It could be due to a tight pec minor because of the attachment points, like we said, that third through fifth rib. So if you're prone to ribs going out, you constantly get them treated or adjusted, this might be part of your problem too. And you might just need to address the front side a little bit. So if you find that your pec minor is tight, you have those rounded shoulders, you have that decreased external rotation, then you're gonna to need to do something about it. So you're gonna to need to either release it or stretch it. And you can do a combination, it's generally best to do both, but we're gonna go over those right now. So the releasing technique is a self myofascial technique. So essentially you can use multiple things. Some people can just literally use their hand to do this. Other times we're gonna incorporate something like a ball. If you had a Theracane, you could use that as well. 
but again, we need to find the muscle. So again, your pec major is over top of it. So you can just effectively deal with and work on the pec minor by pushing through the pec major and getting to it. That does work, but it's actually slightly better if you could take your hand or your fingers and actually pull the pec, mi the pec major out of the way, and then you're gonna find that you can get deeper into that pec minor. And again, it's gonna be a little more aggressive. You're gonna feel pretty uncomfortable doing this. But if you're on that really tight band of muscles right there, you're probably on it. You could also take a ball. So again, we generally like you kind of pull the pec major out of the way. So again, that pec's here, if we could pull it out of the way a bit by sliding over and then working down, looking for those areas, we're gonna be on it pretty good there. So again, we're gonna go from that coracoid process down to about halfway down your pec, looking around. You can do this just holding a ball sitting there or standing if you want. That works as well. You can kind of do gentle oscillations on it, or you can hold sustained pressure. Sometimes I'll have people go up to a wall, and again, just hold this against the wall as well, but it can be effectively treated just standing there, either with your hand and fingers and applying the pressure, or by using a ball on it. So if you're finding that you can't get really effectively just standing there holding it, using your hands, you can do it against the wall. It's definitely more aggressive, so you gotta take it easy and go slow with it. But again, you're gonna take that ball, you're gonna try to kind of pull that pec out of the way, the pec major, and try to get underneath it. And again, you should be able to feel some tenderness there. Then you're gonna go over to that wall and you're gonna lean into it. It's best to actually have this arm up a bit because it'll take your pec major out of the way even more for you and allow you to get deeper in there. And then you're gonna apply that pressure right into that pec minor. Again, you're just gonna hold sustained pressure. You roll around to find it. Once you find it, you hold it. It's best to have your elbow bent with this. You don't really want it too straight, traction in the nerve. It's best to just have the elbow bent and apply that pressure. Again, you can add a little bit of leaning back with your head as well to get a little better stretch, but you're just gonna sit and hold that sustained pressure. You can go up to a minute, but if it releases before that, 20, 30 seconds in, get off it, move on to something else. So again, we have that pec major over top of the pec minor. So it's usually best, it's more effective to get it out of the way if you can. So if you can take the ball or your hand, again, you're pulling the pec over a bit, it'll help. Getting the arm up actually helps too. That's why we do it against the wall like that. So you can get deeper and underneath that. And then again, apply that pressure to the wall. So try to pull that pec out of the way. Again, if you're not really pulling out of the way, that's okay. You're still gonna effectively treat it, but you usually can just get deeper and get in there a little bit better if you do that. So we're gonna go over a basic stretch for the pec minor. So you've probably seen the doorway stretch or the corner stretch where people step into a corner or step into a doorway. It's effective at opening up the pecs, more so the pec major. So if we wanna really get into the pec minor a little bit, we're gonna change the position or raise the arm up a bit. Because again, the muscle's running like this. So if we can get the arm elevated, just like we did over there on the wall with the ball, we're gonna get a more effective stretch. So you can use a corner, you could use a doorway, whatever you need to, and essentially you're gonna line up to it and you're gonna place the front of your arm in the doorway. You can go just, to, just next to the shoulder as well. And then you're gonna to work to stretch and open up this pec minor. You wanna make sure that you're feeling the stretch occur through here. If you do just a standardized stretch where your arm's really in the, in, in the door, you're gonna get more of an arm stretch. You're not gonna really isolate down to that smaller pec minor. So again, we're going in the door frame. We're gonna put that there. You're gonna elevate up. You want your arm to be about that angle in the door. So you don't really wanna be down in this 90 degree position when you're trying to get the pec minor. You wanna be up about there. So again, a nice upward angle there. So we're gonna go into that doorway and we're gonna reach across. And again, we're torquing through our chest trying to feel the stretch right here. You'll know you're on it if you palpate around in that area that we talked about where that pec minor is. If you're feeling that stretch, you know you're getting it effectively. So this one, it's a, you're gonna stretch it about 30 seconds or so and try to get that release, do both sides and just feel the stretch there. Again, we're aiming at this stretching more so than this. Your standard doorway stretch, you're gonna get more of an arm stretch, bicep stretch, that sort of thing. So we're trying to target this pec minor a little bit better. All right, thank you for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, please give us a like as well as subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos just like this. Now, if you'd like to get three video exercises that we've done with Dr. David Oliver, 
that will help you to correct some of that forward head, those rounded shoulder, you know, that kyphosis that we're all suffering from today because we're looking down at our phones, we're hunched over our computers all day. So these exercises are meant to correct your posture. So if you'd like to get them, uh, they're completely free. Uh, there's going to be a link to get them somewhere here on the video or down below in the description. Just go to that page, enter your email, and we'll send you those videos right away.